Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Hysteria by Dreadbooks. So Hysteria is, again, it's part of the Chromatic series by Dreadbooks, and this is the actual VCO that um, has actually been widely acclaimed and it won several prizes as well. And in today's video, I do want to show you why that is and why I think that it is absolutely more than deserving of those kind of well accolades. Um, so before we dive into that, I do have to thank Dratbooks for uh, making this module available to me. And also good to point out that I'm going to be reviewing the 1.1 revision of the Hysteria module. So you will be able to recognize whether you've got a uh, V1 or a V1.1 based on the backplates. So as you can see, this one has a backplate here that's probably like 50% tall. And if you've got a V1, you'll see that this uh, bit of the PCB will actually be as long as the other one. So again, it's not size that matters, it's what you do with it. So uh, here you've got the Hysteria V1.1. And um, as said, make sure you enjoy this. Here we go. So here we've got Hysteria, uh, which is the sixth of the Dreadbooks chromatic modules I'm actually reviewing. So after Hysteria, I'll also do a video on nostalgia and I, also have the antidote here as well. Uh, you can't see that, it's just out of screen. Um, unfortunately, Dreadbooks has discontinued the antidote, so I'm not quite sure whether or not I should do a video on it. Um, yeah, please let me know in the comments below whether or not you want me to do a video on the antidote, uh, because I still think it's an interesting module. Uh, but let's go back to Hysteria. So before we... Uh, <laughs> we actually dive into the module, I'd like to talk about the Dutch high school system. <laughs> Why I'm going to do that uh, will become clear after a while. So in the Dutch high school system, um, you have that uh, differentiation starting uh, from approximately well, 12 years uh, old when you actually go to high school here in the Netherlands. And um, there you have that differentiation. And uh, one of the programs is the so-called academical preparation um, education. So it actually prepares you for a life in academia. Within that, uh, you have two, well, two varieties, you might say. On the one hand, you've got the Atheneum, which is, well, as said, it's just a prep course for a life of academia. And you have the Gymnasium, which, well, for those of you who have a bit of an hyster uh, historical background, that might be a an interesting name. And the Gymnasium is the exact same as the Atheneum with one main difference. You will also be um, educated in Latin and ancient Greek. So that's the big difference between Atheneum and Gymnasium. And I, well, I, I, I did the Gymnasium course and therefore I have a bit of understanding of Latin and ancient Greek. So that being said, if you then look at, well, mainly all of the names in the chromatic series with the exception of course of the antidote um, all of these are inspired by well uh, of course well current gr the current greek language uh, but also the well the ancient greek language as well and if you then look at a term like hysteria uh, which we of course all uh, think well, in regards to when someone is hysterical, um, the actual <laughs> background and how that term came to be is my, it might be a bit misogynistic because the, the term hysteria is derived from the ancient Greek word uh, 
his there. And I'll probably I've probably butchered the Greek pronunciation of that, and I do apologize profoundly for that. Uh, but it is the ancient Greek word for uterus. So where the <laughs> the ancient Greeks believed that the uterus uh, was indeed the reason why, in this case, women uh, became hysterical, which is of course a a a a, a complete well uh, a complete myth, of course. Uh, but it is, of course, always interesting to understand um, these well these reasons for why why words are the way they are currently, and that's of course the background on hysteria. So, but now let's have a look at the actual module. So, the one thing I immediately like about this is it is positioned as a performance VCO. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is between a performance VCO versus a, well, let's say a, um, well, uh, maybe a recording VCO. Uh, but I, I like that distinction that they said, okay, this is something where you truly want to perform with going forward. Uh, let's go through the uh, the inputs and outputs and the rest of the UI here. So you've got your full proactive in, so that's where you want to uh, patch your, um, well, your sequence into. You also have a secondary CV, and that is quite interesting because you can indeed patch your full proactive signal into that CV, but then you'll have to use the attenuator that's connected to that to, again, make sure that you are in tune. So make sure that you have that full proactive there as well. But if you want to start to well have an effect on your sequence or if you want to well, actual influence the sequence that you've got. Then you've got this that secondary input. Then you've got your sync input. So if you want to do anything where you might want to sync your um, uh, your actual sound waves to an external source, then you can do that with that. And in that same approach, you also have the pulse output. So you've got your main output, which is indeed uh, defined from a wave shape perspective. Uh, by this slider here, and of course the well the pulse width modulation, if applicable with this one, but you will always have a pulse output. And one of the main utilities for a dedicated pulse output is again for syncing with additional um, oscillators. So that's of course a bit of uh, an advanced topic that we want to uh, look into but just to make sure that we have both of those options there so you have a dedicated sync input and you have a dedicated sync output you might say which is then of course the pulse output um, but you can of course also use that as a secondary audio output as well and then we come to probably what really sets this VCO apart, and that is the built-in quantizer. And you can do that, you can use this unquantized, you can use it quantized. It has a very easy way to, well, to actually tune the actual VCO, um, actual two ways, as I said. So one is you need to patch in uh, 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 just one volt first, and then uh, three volts, um, later on, or four volts actually. So first one volt, then four volts, and you need to press that button a couple of times. But it also features a automatic tuning mechanism where you just have to hold that button down for six seconds and it's gonna tune itself automatically. And I would love to see <laughs> more VCOs to uh, offer a similar functionality because it makes your life that much easier. Um, so that being said, that's the um, the top end here. As said, you also have your dedicated outputs. Uh, but again, it is a bit misleading because you actually have two outputs. You've got that one and you've got the pulse outputs. So just to make sure that we understand that. Then you've got your four sliders here. Uh, each has a dedicated CV input too so where these become offsets. So you've got your octave selector. And again, that is a bit of a misnomer because 
Yes, if you are in a quantized mode, you can use this to select the octave you're in. And if you're in an unquantized mode, you might want to start calling this your course um, tuning because it is, even though it is quant, it is indeed tuned, but it's not just on the octaves, it's just a, a coarse one uh, where you have the semitones as a fine tune mechanism. Uh, of course, yeah, it does indeed give a nice indication on the left hand side what kind of notes you are, but if you use this in a coarse mode, that, that is all thrown out of the window. But once you are in a quantized mode, these will this will indeed step through the octaves and you will indeed have your semitones right there so keep that in mind that this is indeed tuned to western music uh, and western scales then you've got your waveforms and i'm gonna do a quick run through of those in a bit and the ones that are highlighted with a dot on the left hand side are typically the ones that don't respond to the last slider here which is pulse width modulation and that is of course well as you can see a sine wave will not respond to pulse width modulation um, a triangle won't a ramp in this case or a saw uh, won't but then you've got these well these more complex um, waveforms as well as the pulse and those will of course respond to that and let's have a, a quick listen and have a quick look at how that works so I'm just going to connect this into there we go and you'll immediately see that we are <laughs> in a let's go a bit to a middle want to open it up slightly there there you go and let's start with a pulse wave that's the first one that's the one we're now looking at and as you can see we can then indeed play with the pulse width and it does go through zero so if you really go into the edges there you go. leave it at the middle then you've got something that starts to look like a super saw which indeed again is pulse width modulatable but it doesn't go through zero because if you go to the edges then it just well falls down into well let's say it collapses on itself and it goes back into in this case a, uh, a saw wave Speaking of that, you also have your regular uh, saw wave, which does not respond to the pulse width modulation. You've got your triangle wave. Let me just position it correctly. And as you can see, this is extremely nice and sharp. So what that tells me is that you probably have something like a triangle core uh, right there. Uh, and then you've got your complex wave shapes. which will respond to pulse width modulation. There you go. Nice and complex, really like that. And then you've got a complex one that's based on a sine wave. And then you have the actual sine wave itself. Uh, so that's a quick run through of that. Uh, but what I also wanted to show is what you can then do indeed. So as said, in the unquantized mode, I can use this to set a coarse frequency. And you then use this for fine tuning. So you go from, uh, I've now have an A sharp six and you go all the way up to an A sharp seven. So you've got a single octave there, and here you can go and step through everything. 
which is nice. But if you then go to the quantize mode, and I set this to a C, you'll see that this will be C4, C5, C6, 7, 8, 9. That is quite impressive. Goes all the way down to C1, if I'm not mistaken, and below C1, it is uh, <laughs> gonna do something else. But maybe if I set it to a sine wave, C2, C1, C, uh, that's not gonna happen. Maybe in a triangle wave, we might want to see, so we've got C2, C1. No, we can't reach uh, C0, unfortunately. But then again, it's just it's just grand. And you can then, of course, also do the same thing. Let me just go to C3, that's a nice one. And this tracks perfectly. All the way up to C4. So if you want to have a G, you just set the slider to G, or well, now you've got an F. Now you've got a G, that's it. And as said, all of this is modulatable. And that is of course something that we can uh, truly play with. So if I set it like that, and I grab another one of these cables. So I'm, I'm trying out the tendrils cables, which um, Dan has been so kind to send to me. And I do have to say, these are great for, um, for filming because they get your cables nice and out of the way. So let's grab this and let's go to the second and that's now set in LFO mode. So I can just, uh, oh, I can actually just turn this around so we can see it a bit better. That's nice. And let's go into that and turn this up. So now we are trying to do some pulse with modulation. So turn this all the way down. Super Soul. We can also do this for the actual waveform selection. Might want to make this a bit slower. We can also do that for the semitones. So this is in quantized mode or in unquantized mode. But this will actually bring a lot of dynamics uh, when you're actually playing a, a melody or a sequence. And I'll let, I'll let you listen to that as well later on. And the same is of course for the octaves. So right now we're just sweeping through the uh, frequency spectrum, but if you then set it to quantized, so if you then attenuate that a bit, you start to get these really nice 8-bit kind of sounds, and I like that, I love that. But I digress. Um, so I think I've run you through the um, what well, the actual UI and how you should use it. How about we start making some music with this? So again, I've got a I've got a sequence lined up on the Hermit. I'm just going to patch that into the CV in first. So let's do this unquantized and let's start that sequence. So that is 
as out of tune as you can get. And keep in mind that this is the actual melody. But as we then attenuate that signal, you get something else entirely. But the nice thing is then, if we then start to quantize it, It might still not be musical, but at least it's in tune, right? But then again, that's of course the thing. So let's just keep it to the full prerogative. But you can then of course add this to it. So these two are indeed summed. <laughs> so it almost has a a frequency modulation kind of charm to it and I like that but let's um let's just disconnect that uh, let's grab another melody uh, let's just search for a good one and let's set it to quantize So that's one thing. So now we have that. And what you can then do is, as I said, if you then grab the actual LFO that we've got here, let me just set it to a normal rate there. You can then start again to play with things like, like pulse width modulation. You can also do some modulation of the actual wave form that you've got. Or you can just add a bit of dynamics to the actual sounds that you've got. So you're actually broadening the, uh, the sound that you've got here. But still, this might be a bit too much. But if you then do that on the octaves, some crazy nice sounds out of it at least if that's your thing of course but let's leave this as it is so uh, the other thing I want to do is I just want to quickly grab and create an envelope out of the gate out from the hermit so I'm just gonna do it like that so we're gonna go back to this one trigger one and create a nice envelope there Patch that through to the, well, to the Eudaimonia. And we're just starting to create a nice patch of all of this. Let's disconnect this. Get that in there. So what we might want to do then is just grab this one here and grab this from the output. There you go. Let's just... Uh, 
something nice and shiny. Let's apply a bit of low pass filter and a teeny tiny bit of high pass filter. Introduce some resonance. start to create something nice there so let's um, make sure that we also introduce some percussion so again that's something that's gonna be out of bounds for the um, <laughs> for the chromatic series right now I'm not gonna use the, um, the antidote for that right now but I'm just gonna use my trusted Trusted foundation. Also want to introduce well, maybe something else as well and we're just going to create a nice and well, responsive patch something that we can use let's introduce a bit of snare as well and then we start to we'll start to play and create some great sounds there too as I said I'm still trying to uh, learn how to work with the uh, with the tendrils these these cables uh, the angles approach is great for filming as you can see but as i've only been using straight cables it is it takes uh, a bit of getting used to so let's uh, create a bit of a more interesting slightly yeah so let's start and do something else as well so one thing I typically like to do because I I'm typically not using the pulse output for syncing uh, but what I like to do is actually use that for some of the additional capabilities within the chromatic series so um, I like to just add that to the dystopia and really start to bit crush while well, the the living bejesus out of that and as we can then easily just patch that into the eudaimonia so let's uh, I'm just gonna clear that for now so this is the well, the regular sound that you get out of that. But if we then and if we then combine those, and we can do the same thing because we now have that also available as our low pass filter so we're just gonna 
a third variety of that. Let's turn these down. Well, I want to lower the octaves a bit. And we might want to um, throw in, well, how about we just throw in a bit of reverb, sorry, a bit of delay on that. So let's do it like this out into the nostalgia. And as said, I'm going to do a full video on nostalgia later on but I couldn't pass up this chance to actually grab nostalgia as well. Like so this is nice. still something I just love playing with and it's still something I need to master working with delays and everything even want to throw this through euphoria and really well destroy any of the well potentially nice sounds that we've got <laughs> and again I just like to play with these things To a bit of a clean sound and then just introduce a bit of the bit crushed signal not too much and a bit oh, lots of the low pass
actually might want to pass this through a low pass filter at the same time. Let's see. And we might want to do that right now. Because there we are introducing a little noise here. And that is mainly, of course, because of the delay that we've got there. And, of course, yeah, the, the phase is not helping either. Once you start stacking all these effects, it does become a bit of a of a hassle, you might say. But let's go back to the hysteria. I think we've got a nice and clean sound. And as I said, you might then want to start playing around with some of these, uh, these CV inputs. Switch off quantizing. But as I said, I, I truly prefer to do it on the on the octaves because that does bring me back to the late 80s, early 90s. It's just nice to play with, if you ask me. So, I do hope that you find this a usable, or in, at least interesting video on Hysteria. I truly love the way you can use this in all its shapes and forms, and all of the things that you can do with this, because it is, it is a absolutely fantastic VCO. I still need to learn how to master it, but I do hope that you won't hold my well, my work against the uh, <laughs> the hysteria as a module. So let's go back to the studio and let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, cheers. So I truly hope that you enjoyed this quick video. Well, quick, it's probably like uh, 45 minutes long by now. So I do have to apologize for that. Um, as you have come to understand, I do get carried away uh, when I'm well building my, building my patches and actually jamming. Um, let me know what you think of that. Would you like these videos to be shorter where I'm gonna limit the amount of jamming that I do? Or do you say, well, yes, but just keep on doing that. If we don't like it, we'll just skip it. Um, just let me know in the comments down below. Um, that being said, 
I'll also ask everyone, if you do have any questions on the Chromatic series, uh, have a look at some of the other videos in this series. I'm going to create a specially dedicated playlist uh, just for these going forward. So if you do want to uh, look into the others, you don't have to uh, scroll through the whole thing. You can just get a, well, a playlist for those. Um, again, I do have to thank Dreadbooks for, uh, for sponsoring this episode. And, well, going forward, um, I will be recording a video on the nostalgia. And as mentioned in the intro, I'm still considering doing a video on the antidote, Joe. Again, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, again, if you've got any other th thing that you want to know, any sort of question, feedback, please don't hesitate to... Uh, Drop me a line at Jesper at the Modular Clubhouse, Dolanel. If you've got any suggestions for modules that I should be reviewing, any uh, suggestions for um, for guests I can invite to the weekly Modular Clubhouse meets, again, uh, leave them in the comments down below. Drop me a line, reach out through social media, whatever's your fancy, just do that. Um, for now, I would like to say thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. I know that the world is a crazy place right now and I hope that I've been able to, um, well, make today a bit better for you. And um, that being said, I'm just going to keep repeating myself, but please everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and I do hope to see you for my next video. Take care. Cheers.